Douglas McGregor is a retired U.S. Army colonel, author of the fantastic book Margin of Victory, a frequent guest on the show. He joins us tonight. Doug, thanks so much for coming on. Sure. So what would be the reason to stay in Iraq at this point? I can't think of any, to be perfectly blunt with you. Uh, I, none that are any good. There are people who sympathize with those Arabs in Iraq who would like us to stay as some sort of counterweight to Iran. But frankly, we have no vital strategic interest that, that compels us to be there. The president is very lucky. These missiles, as you pointed out, were targeted uh, in advance, and we were informed in advance of where they were going to land, so we were able to evacuate soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines and have no casualties. The president made a right decision not to respond. Now he needs to live up to the promises that he made to the American people and pull us out of both Syria and Iraq. That war is over. We lost it. Iran is a winner for the moment. But it won't be a winner for very long because Iran has to compete with the Turks and the Sunni Islamists for control of Iraq. So our interests do not involve Iraq and Syria. Our interests be, begin along a line that runs across the top of Israel, Jordan, Saudi Arabia, around Kuwait, and yep. down to the middle of the Persian Gulf. Yep. That's where our interests have been. The Levant for to the Gulf, of course. So you're saying that if we want to impede the growth of Iran's influence in the region, hand them Iraq and wish them luck, in the same way that the, the Soviets invading Afghanistan precipitated the end of the Soviet empire. Is that what you're saying? Mr. Erdogan in Turkey has made it very clear that he covets northern Iraq. He would like to control all of Syria. He is now sending Sunni Islamist fighters and Turkish troops into Libya and Tunisia. He is the new problem for us, not Iran. Iran really is on the ropes. Its population is sick to death of the wars that have been fought in Iraq and Syria by proxy forces and by Iranians in the Quds Force. They've taken thousands of casualties. Mr. Soleimani was popular with many, but very unpopular with others, especially the people that lost sons fighting in those countries. Yes. Let's get out, leave it alone, let the people there sort it out, and they will. Iran's not going to be popular for very long in Iraq. Is there any hope that that happens? Well, the president can do it. He has a wonderful opportunity now. He's a new point of departure. He can take the clean sheet and, and put it on the table, and, and he can sit with the Iranians and say, look, what are your interests? Tell us. We'll tell you what ours are. And he can draw that line that I mentioned. That can become the Trump line. And that's how great powers sort things out. But there's no support in this country to stay in Iraq and Syria. There is no support in the United States for a war over there. He knows that. So we have two, two groups of people that know something. The leadership in Tehran knows it doesn't want a war with us. We know we don't want a war with them. What a wonderful opportunity to sit down and sort it out. The only impediment is permanent Washington. Yes. As always. Well, thank you so much for that. I appreciate it.